Okay guys, so this is on lab 10. It's really just a lab that's again taking advantage of the relationship between pH, pOH, Ka, Kb, and Lachantier's principle. Okay, and so we know if we have any substance that is part of an equilibrium, whether it's mostly one way or equilibrium in general, we're going to have a K that's equal to products over reactants. For a, re a reaction or a substance like this that's technically not soluble, where you have solid at the bottom of the um, containers, here you have um, a solid j that is considered just like the liquid water. You don't put that in your equation. And so technically, while this K is the same, we call it solubility product because there's something that's not soluble and we don't put the solid at the bottom. Um, so it's just going to be the products here just because um, you know that's those are the only aqueous substances. And, but you're going to solve it the same way. So we're going to do two different things here. First we're going to deal with a substance or two that is by itself and we are going to um, really look at how it dissociates what's the pH because if we have hydroxide we can relate pH all the way back to Ka, Kb. And then we're going to do Le Chantier's principle which is going to allow us to um, evaluate what happens if we add in a bunch of hydroxide. And so Le Chantier's principle kind of says that when you apply a stress it's going to go the opposite way. And so if we add in product, it should shift the whole equilibrium this way, where you would get more precipitating out, um, and the, well, the solubility will be affected, but I'll let you guys see how that happens. Now a couple of things. Usually in our ice chart we talk about X. Here you can also talk about the hydroxide um, or the other ion either way. It doesn't really matter whether you talk about uh, one half of this or um, one of this is equal to two of this. Um, it just is a matter of um, when you lose one of these you're going to form one calcium and two hydroxide. So the solubility is going to be equal to half of that. And so just kind of keep that in mind as we're going through. But let's look at how we're going to do the math here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip this and come back and instead we're going to look at some example data. So this is what the lab looks like. You're going to have two to four beakers over in the hood. Make sure you do not shake them up. If you shake them up your data is going to be terrible and nobody's going to be able to get any data because it takes like an hour for the stuff to resettle back out. So as you are getting your pH values, you're going to get your pH values. You're going to get one. You're going to clean the the pH meter, and then you're going to get another value. You're going to do the same thing with um, something that's had either sodium hydroxide or calcium chloride added, a common ion. And so you're going to get your pH values for both the solution by itself and with a common ion that's been added. Okay. And then you're going to go back to your station and you're going to do your your math. And so um, again this takes into account those equations from your equation sheet which if it were me I would totally bring one of these to lab. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit. There we go. Um, got it. Let's do it like that. Perfect. Okay, so once you have your pH values, we know from the equation sheet that pH is related to pOH because pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And so we can very easily find um, this value. So we're just going to say 14.00 equals um, 12.30 plus P -O P -P -O -H. 
we're going to subtract the 12.3 from both sides. And just to make sure we're not messing anything up because, you know, why make a silly mistake? You end up getting 1.70 is equal to pOH in this instance. Um, again, guys, this data came from old pH meters, so make sure that your values are um, totally appropriate here. So taking into account sig figs, when I subtract, I go to the fewest decimal spaces, so this is 1.70. Now, we can easily go from pOH to, P, uh, to the hydroxide ion concentration because we know that pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Okay, so here we have our 1.70 is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. We're going to divide or multiply by a negative 1 and you end up getting a negative 1.70 is equal to the positive log of the hydroxide ion concentration. We're going to take the anti-log, which depending on your calculator is either 10 to the x or 10 to the caret. So we're going to take the anti-log of both sides, one point, negative 1 1.70 equals my hydroxide ion concentration, which is, um, right, negative 1.70. Um, because of how you round, I'm going to go ahead and do scientific notation, um, 2.00 times 10 to the negative 2, oops, there it goes. Now if we go back to the equation, if we talk about calcium hydroxide, you can kind of see every time I have one of these dissolve, I'm going to get one calcium and two hydroxides. So here I have the concentration of hydroxide. We can tell from our mole to mole ratio that if we dissociated two moles of hydroxide, we would have one because of the coefficient one here. And so we're just going to have this number times two, times one divided by two, or our calcium ion concentration here is 1.00 times 10 to the negative two. Okay. About half. Now the molar solubility, that just means how much of this guy has dissolved. And so there's a couple of different ways to do it, but really we've already got, you know, the concentration of calcium that dissolved. Oops times 10 to the negative 2. We can tell just from this dissociation that every time we had one mole of calcium that dissociated, we had, you know, it, it came from one of the um, CaOH, oops, OH2. And so it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so this value is going to be exactly the same. Now you're going to do this twice. This number is not going to be exactly the same. It'll be close, you know, unless you have a really big issue with your pH meter, but you'll have an average there. Now to find our KSP, we have the concentration of hydroxide. We have the concentration of calcium. We can plug it in to our K equation. 
Um, so K is just going to be products over reactants. Because our reactant is a solid, it's excluded. So you're going to plug in your values. This is 0 0.0100. For hydroxide, this is 0 0.0200. And because there's two hydroxides, this value right here is going to be squared. Okay. So our KSP value here um, make sure you are being smarter than your calculator. Um, so if it were me, um, I would have a parenth if you're going to use times 10 to the use parentheses parentheses around each one and then a second around the one that you're going to square. Um, if you use E values you still probably want to do it around the square the one that's being squared um, and just just because. Okay so this is 4.00 times 10 to the negative 6. My control button has stopped working sometimes. Control shift plus. Okay. Fine, we'll use this control. Control shift. Oh, that's because I'm not in Word. Okay, it only works over here. Um, so 4.00 times 10, control shift plus, negative 6. And so that's really how you're going to calculate your K. Now technically the K value should be a constant. Um, eh, it's going to be close. It shouldn't be very different, but it's not going to be the same. Um, in terms of your percent error, this is going to be where you find the bigger mistakes just because um, our pH meters are not calibrated by you know NASA every semester or so. So just depends on how much they've been abused. Okay, so over here we're going to do the exact same calculation. The difference is um, how much calcium is there? It's going to tell you hmm, And I don't have it written down here because I think we changed it. Oh, and I didn't write it on my notes either. Okay, so on your beaker, you're gonna, you're still gonna find your pOH. Um, you know, 14 minus this you can easily get to your hydroxide ion concentration. Um, this value is still going to be hydroxide divided by 2 just because of our mole ratio, but you also need to consider the calcium concentration I don't remember how many uh, moles or what the molarity is of that solution. Um, so just make sure when you're entering it into your K, it's, you know, relatively easy to say, oh, you know, here we had, well, let's go ahead and solve this, but I'll, and I'll show you what I mean here. Okay. Um, oh, that really bothers me. Oh, well, we'll get there. So here we've got our pOH to find our hydroxide ion concentration. We know that pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. We're going to divide both sides by a negative 1. We get 1.97 is equal to log of the hydroxide ion concentration. We take the anti-log of both sides and our hydroxide ion concentration is um, 1.07 times 10 to the negative 2.
Now technically we can divide by two. You know the mole to mole ratio here um, we would get five point three five to the negative three but um, it's very likely that this is going to have much more um, because you're also going to have some calcium chloride that's been added here um, and I feel like it's almost like point one molar so it would be this value so the total calcium amount from dissociated the 5.35 from above plus the amount of CaCl2 that was added. Okay, so just kind of consider that as you're working through things. Okay, but the molar solubility here is the same. It's going to be that 5.35 times 10 to the uh, negative. Why is that not there? Negative three. Um, to find your KSP, you're going to plug in the values that you know. Again, kind of make sure you're paying attention to the, um, the calcium that's on solution because in general you should have the calcium that's there plus the calcium that dissolved from the solution itself. Um, hmm. Where's that then? E negative two squared, another set of parentheses. And I can tell that this is um, not considering that because it's way different. But this is 6.13 times 10 to the negative seven. There you go. Um, now ideally K is equal despite the numerous variations. So I know that this is too small because we didn't have um, this other calcium included here. Um, I'll go back to my notes in my office and see if I can figure it out. But for right now, that's kind of how you work through it. Now, if you look at the pre-lab quiz, there we go. Um, let's see if I can There we go. Here you're going to do the same thing, pH to pOH, pOH to hydroxide, hydroxide to the BS2, and then you're going to have the equal one to one because there's one of these for one of those, and then you calculate your KSP. Exactly what we just did. I'm not going to answer safety. Now here we've got KSP and we are asked for the pH. Here we're working backwards so I kind of want to do this one. Um, is it number four or five? And five. So let's do this one first. Oh, actually it does move. Okay good. Alright so here I've got my um, BS OH squared and two of those. Okay. Now we're given our KSP value. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. 
and just change my things. There we go. Now we can kind of see we're looking for pH. There's no pH related to this, but we can get our hydroxide ion and use that to get pOH and then eventually pH. Um, and so just there's more than one way you can go about it, but I'm going to show you the way I would do it and we'll go there. Um, actually this says lead, but it didn't show the right. It doesn't matter. The values are the same. Um, I'll fix that typo in a minute. So here we've got um, equals there it goes 3.991 times 10 to the negative 6. And we're going to go back and solve for this value. Now if we look, we don't really know these. But we know that whatever we lose over here, we're going to gain 1 here, oops, 1x, and we're going to gain 2 here. Okay? So we can actually plug this in and solve for our x value. So Ksp is equal to x times 2x squared equals 3.991 times 10 to the negative 6. Now when you have something squared, you have to square everything in the um, parentheses. So really this is Ksp is equal to x times 4x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify that and say this is equal to 4x to the third. x times x squared is x to the third. And I'm going to go ahead and replace this value. So to find our x value, we're going to divide both sides by 4. Divided by 4. You get something like 9.978 times 10 to the negative 7. equals x cubed. Now depending on your calculator, um, to take the cubed root, you're either going to enter 3 and then the, um, so depending on your calculator, you're either going to enter it like this and then this button, and then you can say answer or that. Um, sometimes they'll have a cube root button if you um, look under your math key. So mine actually looks like this. And then we're just going to type this guy in. Second answer. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, why not? So you end up getting 9.992 9 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so if we go back up here, that's going to be our x value. That means that e equilibrium, we have this guy. Let me go ahead and do this. Control C. This is 2x, so it's 2 times this, this number. Let me make this bigger. So at equilibrium, we have this concentration here. Control V and times 2. Wow.
1.998 10 to the negative 2 like that. So this is our hydroxide ion concentration. Um, let me see. You can go up and kind of evaluate how these things are related again. Um, it's up to you which method you use. But if we have our hydroxide ion concentration, we can get our pOH. And honestly, I think that's the easiest way. Let's plug that in. That's going to give us our pOH. And this is 1.699. pH is related to pOH because they add up to be 14. So if we know our pOH, we can get our pH. Again, that 14 is technically exact. So, I mean, technically you can add another value if you want. I don't think it's really going to matter here. Um, but to get our pH, we're going to subtract the pOH from both sides. So 14.000 minus 6, oops, 1.699 equals our pH. And you get something like 12.3 um, hmm. This doesn't specify it, and I guess if you had done it a different way, you would need four sig figs. So to clarify, I bet if you use 4, it'll be fine, even though it should be more. Yeah. And so, like you can kind of see, I think um, I did it the other way where we did, took the hydroxide ion and used the KW, but it doesn't matter. Okay? Last one that I wanted to talk about was this one. Um... Here we've got a slightly soluble base. Molar solubility is this. What concentration is dissolved? Now guys, don't overthink this. It gives us the molar solubility, meaning it gives you how much will dissolve. What concentration of hydroxide? It's a 1 to 2 ratio, so you just multiply by 2. So this is 1.60 multiply by 2, 3.20 times, oops, times 10 to the negative 2. Woohoo. Okay. Um, and so that's really, again, just this lab is desire, designed to reinforce Lachantier's principle and the relationship between all of these equations. So hopefully that helps.